I am a Blender artist, and ever since I started doing 3D projects on this channel, I've been getting the same comments saying essentially, that's cool, but AI can do it better. Annoying! But are the annoying people right? Can AI actually do it better? Yeah! In this video, I tried to find out, and it turns out answering that question was a lot harder than I thought, but more on that later. First, I had to come up with some ground rules for this little experiment. Number one, I will pay for and use the most state-of-the-art AI models that are available today. That way, none of you guys can yell at me that I'm not giving the machines a fair chance to kill me. Number two, I won't do any custom training for how to use the AI outside of reading the documentation and the materials that are on the website. After all, the stated purpose by many very annoying people is that these tools can be used by literally anyone. And number three, I will only use Blender on my laptop or desktop PC because to be fair, it really wouldn't be fair if I used a gigantic render farm to render stuff that just wouldn't be renderable otherwise. Finally, I will attempt to make the same sequence in both Blender and AI as closely as I can. But obviously, I need a sequence. So I came up with this, a terribly drawn storyboard for a Star Wars style fan animation. After all, I think even the most amateur filmmakers could probably do better than the mess that the most recent movies have been. At least we got Andor though. Anyway, here's the general outline. A fighter, X-Wing or similar, will be rocketing through a hyperspace tunnel. It will come out of the tunnel near a desert planet. Then we cut to a close-up of the pilot in the cockpit, looking out the window and spotting his target, a lone star destroyer. He'll roll over the camera into a dive bombing run. Then, on the dive bombing run, he'll dodge intense laser fire before deploying an experimental weapon at the last second and pulling up. The star destroyer will then explode into a massive fireball. Now, the Blender work for this I knew would be complicated, so I decided to start with the AI video, since I assumed it would be as simple as typing the description of each of my shots into a box. Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. For this first attempt, I bought a subscription to ChatGPT+, and I bought a subscription to Runway so I could use their image to video model. And then I started plugging my shot descriptions into ChatGPT, and it spat out this. That's fine, I guess, but it looks like it has the Breaking Bad Mexico filter on it. So I plugged in more descriptions. No matter what I did, I kept getting yellow images. I still haven't figured out how to make ChatGPT generate something that isn't colored yellow for some reason. Anyway, I took the best looking result I could find and I went ahead and plugged it into the runway video model. And this is the result I got. It's interesting. There is motion and it, some of it actually looks okay. But some of the motion makes no sense, and no matter what I did, I couldn't get the camera movements I described. I tried a few more times with Runway, but ultimately gave up on it. Well, erm, actually, Google has the most state-of-the-art AI model, haven't you heard of it? I'm glad you asked, annoying tech bro caricature. I actually had thought of that. I'm talking, of course, about Google VO3. So I signed up for VO. At first, I tried just using text-to-video. I gave it this description, and this was the output I got. Not the best, but I'm not a prompt engineer but it is better than the images in Runway, so maybe we're getting somewhere. And then I spent hours muddling through like this, and I did finally land on a sequence that was okay-ish, and here it is. Now, I'll give you my thoughts about the AI sequence in a bit, but first, I have to do it all over again, in Blender this time. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. The first thing I did with the Blender sequence was gather assets. One of the huge benefits of Blender is that there is an enormous community of people who have created and released assets for free. Right off the bat, I found this incredible X-Wing model courtesy of Charles Woods on Sketchfab. But what's an X-Wing with no fighter pilot to fly it? Well, luckily I was able to find this amazing Rebel fighter pilot suit also on Sketchfab. Credit here to the Sketchfab user whose username I will not even attempt to pronounce. But that is still just an empty flight suit with no head. I didn't really want to spend a bunch of time modeling a head that wasn't going to be super visible, but then I remembered I have a weirdly realistic 3D model of James Pumphrey's head from one of my first videos. Bruh. I had my hero character and I had my aircraft, which means it was time to start animating. And the first shot I wanted to work on was the hyperspace tunnel, but I was kind of stumped by this one for a little bit. 
At first I tried animating the fighter through a volume, but I just didn't get results that I liked and it took way too long to render the volume. But then I had an idea. Instead of moving the ship through a tunnel, why don't I move the tunnel around the ship? So I made two concentric cylinders, one with a fine stars type pattern and the other with a more cloud-like pattern, both of these done with procedural textures, and then I made those cylinders really long and I just animated them past the ship. The ship doesn't move at all, but it appears to be moving through the tunnel. With that figured out, everything else fell into place. Animating the cameras was very easy because I didn't have to go track along to where the ship was, and getting all the shots that I wanted became much, much more simple. But then how do I get the ship out of hyperspace again? This turned out to be deceptively simple, actually. I just brightened the tunnel and set it to invisible by mixing it with a transparency shader, and at the same time, I scaled in a star background, which is just an image, and a planet model that I already had in my asset library, and boom, instant exit from hyperspace. The second shot was similarly easy. I used a combination of a simple roll and drop animation for the ship, while creating most of the movement by moving the camera itself. Then came the cockpit shot, and I had felt like I was cruising up to this point, but it started to get kind of complicated. To make this one work, I had to come up with a primitive rig for the character's arm and tie it to a simple constraint rig for the control stick. That way, the arm tracks the stick as I move it back and forth, kind of the opposite of what would happen in real life, but it made animating it much more easy. And the added bonus of this is that I was able to reuse that rig for the in-cockpit shot where the ship is diving on the Star Destroyer. But for that, I had to figure out the lasers. I tried a few different things, but what I landed on was a simple particle system. I set up a series of particle emitters using track 2 constraints so that they always point at the fighter, and then I gave the particles themselves a ton of normal-based velocity, so they come shooting out of the direction of the face of each of the emitters. And essentially, this creates an automatic anti-aircraft gun. This is looking good, but I still need to find a way to spectacularly blow up the Star Destroyer. Now, it's no secret that I love blowing stuff up on this channel. And luckily, that means I have a huge library of pre-made VDBs. And for those of you that are new or don't remember or tuned me out last time, VDB is a file format that lets me store explosions in 3D. Now I don't have to go through all that tedious work of doing fluid simulations. I can just drag and drop and boom, bombs on command. For a little extra added detail, I went ahead and smushed the ship around a little bit to create a damaged version and store that in a shape key so I can blend the non-damaged and damaged versions of the ship as it gets blown up. And finally, the shockwave. What's an explosion without a good shockwave? And that was actually pretty simple. I made a simple expanding mesh sphere and I added a volume material to it that loses density as the sphere gets bigger. As is often the case with Blender, complicated effects actually have simple solutions. Then it was just editing down the sequence, adding my own audio mix, and here's the final result. Before I get into my final thoughts, I'm going to take the opportunity to do a couple things really quick. First, I'm going to plug my Patreon. If you want to support what I'm doing here and you want to be credited in future videos and get access to project files from some of my videos, you can check it out at patreon.com slash bitedozer. Also, if you can afford it and feel like it, take the opportunity to donate to the Blender Foundation at blender.org slash donate. They're amazing and they deserve more money. Anyway, on to the final thoughts. What did I learn from this? First and foremost, can AI beat Blender? In my opinion, no in its current form, not yet at least. The fidelity of the AI video is undoubtedly increasing, and actually I would even say for VO is often better than what a very novice Blender artist could produce, but it still lacks one essential thing, art direction. No matter what I did as a casual user, I could not get the exact output I wanted. In some cases, I couldn't even get close. I think in its current state, AI could possibly be a replacement for some stock footage, but not for anything that requires specific art direction. That's just my opinion though, and I can already hear the AI Oilers howling in my comments. So to you I say this, 
I am confident enough in this position to put my time and money where my mouth is. If this video gets enough attention, I will create a public challenge. I will post a storyboard on my Discord server, maybe even release a video with the storyboard, and anyone will be free to submit their own videos, AI or 3D. And in the next video, if we get enough submissions, I will make my own attempt at that storyboard, show off the best results from all of you, and we'll see who can actually do it better. Who knows, maybe I'll even throw in a prize. And to my fellow artists, I'll just say this. Don't let changing technologies keep you from making art. Keep expressing yourself, keep making beautiful stuff, and remember, never stop learning.